Welcome to another episode of Tea Time with Taryn. Today we're doing a, another video in the, the art journal uh, layout series. My video on how to emboss with eyeshadow did so well that I decided I would do a whole layout using eyeshadows and show you different eyeshadow techniques, um, including embossing, but not limited to. So to start off, I really want to do everything on black. So I'm tracing um, a piece of black paper to the size of my journal page layout. Then just cut it out and I'm going to attach it into the book. I'm using um, double-sided tape. I got this tape from uh, Princess Auto, which I, I'm sure is probably just a Canadian store and I don't believe they have an online store. It was some just really cheap stuff that I got. There's some, um, some of the black was overlapping so I just trimmed the edges there. Now I am going to actually um, use some clear gesso and I'm going to paint the edges of my um, page and then uh, I'll be able to use eyeshadow on there too. I was thinking you could probably do this probably with school glue. I just, uh, I didn't think of it. But that might be something you, you might want to try. Let me know if you do and if it works. I don't know. I know that gesso dries fairly quickly, so I thought that it would be a good option. This is the eyeshadow I'm using. It's really old eyeshadow. I don't think they make this brand anymore. But uh, any very shimmery eyeshadow will work really well for this technique. The shimmery the better if you planned on using matte eyeshadow, I really do not recommend it. Uh, I don't find that it, it works well and I've had some comments in previous videos saying that it does not work well. So make sure you're using very, very shimmery eyeshadow. Um, I did one side at a time because uh, the gesso dries very quickly. To apply the eyeshadow, I'm actually using an eyeshadow brush because it picks up the, uh, the eyeshadow very nicely because that's not obviously what the, uh, the brush was made for. So it does the best job picking up eyeshadow. So I'm actually I'm painting it on there and I'm going to let it sit for a while, that's why I haven't dusted it off yet. I just want it to uh, really set and dry with the gesso. Go, uh, go very heavy with this. Be generous. Just, uh, just keep it in mind. If you, if you go too heavy, you're gonna make a nice mess. But uh, just play around with it. See what works for you. Next, I'm going to use my gorgeous grunge set to, uh, to make some texture on the page. And I'm also gonna be using Versamark ink. To, uh, as my ink to apply the impression onto the page. That's how we're going to start. So this is uh, the second technique for applying eyeshadow to your layout. I'm just going really random. Next I'm using my heat emboss powder and I all over the layout. I'm trying to avoid where I have the eyeshadow along the edge because I reuse my powder and I don't want it to end up mixing. Got some where I didn't really want it so I'm just brushing it off. that it's all done, I'm going to use my heat tool and I am going to heat the, uh, the, the embossing powder, the heat and stick powder. I feel like 
shape, but Jess has had more than enough time to set, so I'm just brushing off as much of the excess as I can. Next, I'm going to use, this is just really cheap old L'Oreal um, eyeshadow, also very shimmery, some gold tones. And this one, it isn't a powder eyeshadow, so you can see it works with all kinds of um, eyeshadows. And I'm just using, um, I think it was just a Kleenex to wipe everything clean. Next, I'm going to use some buildable medium just to create some more texture and dimension on my layout. So this is, this is texture paste, but there's a, there's a variety of different ones you can buy from different companies. My stencil is from Stamping Up. going really random with it. So now I'm dumping out some eyeshadow on it. I'm um, pressing in just a little bit. This particular texture paste does dry kind of fast. So uh, I did press in a little bit just to help it bond. Um, once I wipe it off, it won't quite be as vibrant. Um, I'm a little impatient, so I did use a uh, heat tool to dry it. One mistake I used was I used a baby wipe, and for some reason that was kind of creating a, an opposite effect. Instead of brushing it off in some places, it was like setting it. So I don't recommend using the baby wipe. I thought it would be better since I thought that the uh, paper towel might hook against the, uh, the texture paste. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm actually applying double-sided tape to the edges of my layout. So that's another technique. I think we're up to four techniques so far for using eyeshadow. So this works great. You want to go pretty heavy. I didn't really realize at the beginning, finally I uh, opened up the jar and, and started really dumping it on. But it sticks really, really well. It's, it's fantastic. I love using double-sided tape for this. If you, uh, if you want to try something else, um, double-sided tape and glitter are really great too. If you didn't have any fun sparkly washi tape, that's also a, uh, a fun technique as well. My next um, set I'm going to be using is a nice cuppa, and I bought the corresponding die cuts. So I went and, or sorry, I guess they're called framelits, and I went and cut out some of the, the tea cups and the spoons. I'm using Versamark to stamp a pattern onto the teacup. The stamps I used, I got so long ago I can't tell you where they're from. I um, have now dumped some heat and stick onto the cups off the excess and sticking the extra ends back into the container and when I tapped it off a little too much came off so I'm just going over the parts I'd like to add more heat and stick to just to give the pattern a stronger impression. There's such a detailed um, stamp that I think it, it's not coming out as clear as I wanted to so I just took the tweezers and pushed around some of the heat and stick so that the uh, pattern was a little bit clearer. If that makes sense. <laughs> First now we're going to need to heat it up so I'm going to use my tweezers so that I don't around any of the powder with my fingers. 
going over it, making sure it's all completely cooked. Now that surface will be nice and sticky. I'm going to show you two different techniques using the spoons. So I've taken the die cut and I'm shoving it right into the Versamark ink. I'm using my tweezers so I can push it in without getting it all over my fingers. I'm going to pour the um, heat and stick powder over it and then I'm going to uh, tap that off. And uh, I found that the tweezers were knocking some of the powder off so it was a little better to use my fingers this time. Heat that up. Now that I have a surface that's cooked, I can use the tweezers and cook the rest. Next, what I'm going to do is actually turn the other spoon into a sticker using the Xyron Create a Sticker machine. It comes in lots of different sizes. I have it in two sizes. I have the small one and, and the very large one. You just pull it through and then make sure you rub um, over the spoon just to get rid of the excess stickerness. <laughs> um, otherwise it, it seems to stick off the edges and it creates like a web effect. So just make sure you rub it solid. And uh, so I'm going to go through and color in everything with my eyeshadows. I'm using a powder eyeshadow again for this particular teacup. Sorry, I didn't realize that I was a bit off the camera when I was doing this part. To really help it set, it's always a good idea to reheat it after you've put the, uh, the eyeshadow on. I don't know that it's super necessary, but I just want an ultra permanent effect. And I'm going to take Kleenex and just give it a good solid dusting. Rub, 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 get rid of all the excess. Now on to the teaspoons. First I'm going to take just the, uh, the one that I use the heat and stick embossing powder on. And now I am taking the one that I ran through my little sticker maker and applying it just the same way. And again with the heat and stick one, I'm just going over it with the heat tool. I'm going to show you a close up if you can see the difference. The one on the very top, that one is the, the sticker and this one is the heat and emboss version. So it does create a bit of a different texture, but uh, it's just a preference thing. I like that both my teaspoons are gonna have a bit of a different texture on my layout since they're the same color. Could have gone a little more regal and uh, and done my teaspoons in gold, but <laughs> I didn't think of it. That would have looked really pretty. So now I'm going to create my little saying that's going to go with my page. It's also from the same stamp set. 
making it up with the Versamark ink. And again for this I'm going to use the heat and stick powder. This is using the same technique as the other ones. So I am using two different color eyeshadows for this, just highlighting the words because I'm going to cut the words out of this um, stamp all separately. Didn't matter about doing a good job because I'm cutting around the text, I didn't need the teacup pattern. So I'm going to come back to that and I'm going to show you one more technique and that's actually brushing on the Versamark. Instead of using it straight on a, a stamp or anything like that, I'm just brushing it around the edges. Again, I'm going to use the um, heat and stick powder. And I found that it uh, it stuck really, really well. Maybe I went a little overkill with the stays on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, uh, my eyeshadow brush and just gently wipe away kind of the extra that I didn't really want there. that up and I started applying my eyeshadow. I decided I wanted to do two different tones for this as well. So I started around the edge with this um, sort of ready bronze color and then I went over it again with this green and heating it up just to set it and then wiping it clean just to get all the excess off. And I, I'm putting my layout together now. You see my teacups have been placed where I want them. And I'm just adding the words in here. I'm gluing down with clear tacky glue. Because of the dimensions on the back, in the background, um, I was having trouble getting everything to sit flat and so the glue could dry. So, uh, so I just pressed it down for a little bit until it felt like it was surrendering. <laughs> this is a white gel pen. I decided my background, even though there was so much going on, I still felt like it was a little bit empty. So I'm just adding in some extra details into my layout. I love this white gel pen. I use it so much. You get lots of different options for um, this white drawing style, not just gel pens, Sharpie. There are white Sharpies, there are chalk writers. There's all kinds of options for you to use. I just thought that really helped finish off the, lay the layout. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you like the layout that I have created. I hope you get inspired and um, I'd love to see all the, the creations you make using this technique. Feel free to leave me comments and questions below and all the products I've used today um, that are available for purchase, I will add the links into the description that's just below this video. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching. Uh, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And as always, until next time, happy crafting.